So you can bring this to the line several times. Several times. Several times. Be much in prayer for them. But, uh, uh, anybody else? Something on your heart? <coughs> if not, this is our Wednesday night Bible study. We always open up the altar prayer. So before we do that, maybe somebody has a special object of prayer. Amen. Just about to put the lights 
number four uh, all still riding in or still in the accumulation, still riding with the same thing, still dealing with some of the same things that's going on. I think today the more people that I talk to, the more churches that I come in contact with, the more I realize how blessed we are. Amen. Boy, I realize just how blessed that we are to be here in my family's church to be in a place to love one another, to care one for another, and to be able to, to help one another. And we see so many people tonight that have a, a struggle going through things, and the churches are going through things, and they have controversies, and all the things that they've been going through, and all the things that they may see, or opposition that they come against, the things that the devil throw against them. And that's exactly what Paul was facing. He was facing a lot of things that uh, they had, he had worked very hard to help set up the church. And he had done work very hard to see families and lives change. And, and, and on all, all that to be able to see that, to turn around and see that it allows the world and ungodly men and ungodly influencers to come in and convince them that they need to go do something else or, or they need to go a different way. If I don't get nothing else across to you tonight, you don't get anything else out of the book of Galatians or that we study over here, that know this, it's important that we stand guard. It's important that we all stay true. But it's also it's of utmost importance that everything we do is based on this book and what it has told us to do and how it has told us to serve Him and, and to follow Him. And, and, and if we have troubles in our life and things going on or if we have disagreements, let's talk those things out. Let's discuss those things and let's see what the book says and let's move forward. Don't let things fester. Don't let things build up. Don't let things definitely, most definitely, don't let things be covered up. Bring those things to be transparent. I believe that's what Paul was telling the Galatians. That's what he was trying to get across to them. Uh, we get to verse number seven last week, I think, somewhere in there. Through seven. Through seven. Bug Bug is my checker back there. I mean, he makes sure he, he, he knows where I've been and where I've not been. Sometimes I listen to my Michael Lane. Most times I don't listen to Buck. <laughs> but sometimes I do. <laughs> Amen. So we'll pick back up here in verse we'll start back there. The Bible says, How be it then, uh, when you do not God, you get service unto them which by nature are no gods. And, and what Paul's getting across to, to, to the Galatians here is that before you knew God, before you knew salvation, before you knew of Jesus, uh, you did service to those unknown gods. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, the God of creations and God of all these things, uh, the, the they, they worship all kinds of things so before they knew who God was. And we have to remember that, you know, that, that in some of these places that Paul was in, Paul was preaching primarily, you know, <coughs> primarily unto the Gentiles. So he's preaching primarily unto those who had all types of different worship, if they had any worship whatsoever. And we looked at our life today, we looked at our country today, and we looked around us and see, you know, we're very thankful to be a part of living in an area that has primarily been a part of the Bible Belt and has primarily been founded and grounded in faith and Christian values and, and so on. Now, but the further the, the further time goes on, the further away from that we really get. But when Paul was telling here said before you knew God, you worship all these little things and all these other things, and you worship things which were not God, not of God, and have nothing to do with it. And now, once you got saved, you heard the message, you heard what you knew Jesus was, you heard the truth, but yet now you're referring back to some of those things. And he clears that up next in verse number nine. He said, But now after that you've known God, or rather or known of God. How turn ye again to the weak and the beggarly, beggarly elements? So, where do you desire to be in my own? Uh, where, where do you desire again to be in bondage? So, in other words, Paul's saying to them, you got saved. 
You came out of that bondage. Why in the world do you want to go back? Why do you want to go back to the things that you were saved from? Why do you want to go back to the things that you left? So, that's what amazes me about people today who think that you can like, kind of get things you can get saved or you can be all right with God and still just <coughs> He didn't save me then. He saved me that I may not have to pay the consequences of my sin, but not that I may continue to live in my sin. Now, God saved me and brought me out of those things. He brings us out. But if you're struggling and you go through, but you're having a hard time with, with the past, or you're having a hard time uh, uh, with things that you used to do and that get drawn back into that, then I tell you, you need to change some things that you're doing. You didn't change the people that you're around. No. You didn't change the things that you listen to. No. You didn't change the ones you listen to. No. God said He'd give us people. That's why we got a good church. Amen. No. That's why we got good people that we call on. No. I want you to realize that you're not your past is your past. Amen. No. You don't have to continually make your past your future. It doesn't have to be that way. No. You say, well, you don't know, Chris. You say, hey, you don't know how hard it is. I do know how hard it is. It's the hard If we can say we come and get saved, we say that we serve God, our life is right with God. I tell you uh, that you cannot go back there. Hey, you can't come up here and get saved and go back and do the same things you were. The Bible said he can take the whole plow and turn it back to my feet for the kingdom of God. I'm not saying you're saved and lost, but what I'm going to tell you is this. Uh, if you come in here, uh, say you got saved and went back out there the same way it was, you didn't get what I got. Amen. Uh, you didn't get changed.
then why am I trying to pick up the hammer? Why am I trying to pick up the axe? Why am I trying to add to it? Listen, I think there's plenty of work for us to do, but not for us to
know why so many people get stuck on things that they don't want to change? Because they know it works. Yeah. I know it works. Amen. 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 I know it works. Do I think everybody has to worship exactly the same way? Yeah. I know we all come from different kinds of culture, yeah. but if we're going to worship Him, we're going to have to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I'm afraid that we get so many things involved in our church in our, in our, during our worship. So I think we're going to be very busy and very active church. But I think our worship service, I think you want to be busy and active and then well. we as well. We ought to be preaching about rejoicing and getting happy. Let the outside show what feels on the inside. But here's what I say. When we worship Him, it all ought to be about Him. Not about what bands play. Amen. Not about what big bunch we got coming next week. It ought to be about worshiping the Lord. Not about worshiping the Savior. He said, all those things I taught you, all that I don't want it to grow away. I don't want I think it's for nothing because you went completely away from it. Amen. I think you went completely away from it. It always bothers me. I've been in construction, some form of construction all my life. It always bothers me. When we're in the land, we're, we're in times now where we have to have strip malls. We have to have all different types of things. It always bothers me when I go by a place that has, I mean, they built this big building, had grand things. And they didn't look very long and moved across town, everybody else. And that building was just sitting And I was always drove me crazy. Always after that. It just, that's all I understand. And I get to think, you what's that got to do with any of it? Here's what I say. How do you think God feels when he gets down to a Christian that he invested his life in, invested his son in, and they just said that? They just said that and don't do anything. Listen, God wants us to be used. He created us to be used. All these foundations that he laid, the foundations to be used, the foundations to be built upon, the foundations to grow up. He's filled them that in verse number eight. He's not afraid of you unless I, I have bestowed upon you laboring man. In other words, I've worked very hard. I've worked very hard. Hey, to see that you that, 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 that someone's provided for you. Never is it a good thing to invest in something and it turn out to be nothing. Have you ever purchased, made a large purchase in your life? That it could be, I mean, the large purchase is, to, to me, it don't have to be very much money to be a large purchase. But have you ever made a large purchase? Because you thought you really needed this. It was really going to benefit you. It's really going to make your life easier. It's going to make your life better. And when you got it, you're better off of that. Huh? Look here. I'll give you a good man. We have got a, and we have a lot of time. We've got a king size baby. I love it. I decided, man, this is what they, you know those frames that raise up and raise your feet up, raise your back up. I mean, you see on TV. How I mean how do you know, I have we should have We decided, hey, we're gonna get us one of them babies. We got that band. You know what it's used for most of the time? When Riley comes down, he likes to be folded up like a coffee. You know what I like to do? I like it flat as it'll go. I cannot stand that band. I can't. I even thought that, hey, it's going to, they told me, look, that'll have to go actually three folks. It may look, but it hurts everything else. I cannot stand that thing. I cannot stand that thing. I think, you know, well, I'm Hey, we may talk to a hundred people. We may talk to thousands of people. 
up. We may talk to hundreds of thousands of people up in our lifetime, in our lifespan about God and how to get saved and all those things. Listen, I promise you, it does not go out void. It will not return unto you void. Hey, I can tell you this. They may never see the Lord. They may never come and walk down to church. And all those people being by, they may never come down the aisle. But what I can tell you is this. They had an opportunity. Amen. It's not void. Paul said, look, I invested all this time into you. Don't let it go to waste. Don't let it go to waste. Verse number 12 said this. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am a Jew, and you have not injured me at all. Paul's just wanting them to realize. Paul's, a, in the first few chapters, Paul's had to be pretty harsh to them. And he's had to realize that he's been harsh to them. And they probably said some pretty harsh things to Paul. <coughs> We've got to realize that what Paul was saying is Paul was. Paul was trying to tell me to said, look, if Paul was a Pharisee and Pharisees, we don't study that, right? Paul was a very educated Pharisee. He was very high up in the Pharisees. So if he knew all the dealings of the Pharisees, he knew all the workings of the Pharisees, he knew all those things, he invested a lot of time in that. He was very proud of who he was and the things that he had done. But what he came to realize is when he met Jesus, he didn't know anything. He didn't know anything about what there was to know about. He was self-righteous. He was trusting in his own righteousness uh, uh, to save him because of the things that he would do, the things of the way that he would live, and that was the way it was. Uh, but when he came to Christ, he, he remembered, he found out, uh, he abandoned everything that he learned. Amen. Uh, all that time that he spent in the same room, uh, all that time he learned to be that Pharisee, uh, he'd go to the way that because he realized Christ was where his salvation comes from. Amen. 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 That's what they need to realize. Here's the emotions of Paul. He's exact. He was trying to tell them, look, I beseech you, be as I am. For I am a Jew. But he also said, you injured me not. But if you have not injured me at all, what he was saying was he had hurt their feelings. Amen. <laughs> We live in the world today, but I can turn you on again. I'm going to turn you on right now. You'll get two minutes left for this message. Look, <coughs> there's so many people today that break their feelings on their sleep. They're offended over everything. They get hurt. If, if, no matter who. I mean, you could be as gentle and as kind as you can, but it's if you didn't hurt me, you hurt my feelings. Now look, Brother Asses, me and John were standing in the back with this talk. Brother Ross come in and said, you boys arguing? I said, maybe, but I'm winning. So it don't really matter. You know what the sad thing is? The sad thing is most people, I mean, John and I, we can argue. We had not argued in a long time, but we can argue. Thank God, John and I, yes, I'll hurt his feet. He'll hurt my feelings. We'll get over them. You know, we've been friends a long time. And we've probably said some things to hurt one another's feelings several times. Have you ever called me and asked me if my feelings hurt? Oh, no, no. <laughs> you got hurt your feelings. <laughs> we, look, Paul said, Paul said, look, you there. I said, look, man, you didn't hurt me. You got to be a little tougher than that. As you tell me when I first started preaching, he said, you're going to have a tough tie and a skinny heart. He said, exactly right. People's not always going to like what you got to say. People's not always going to accept what you say. We need to realize, Paul needs to put more sin to realize, hey, you're not going to separate me. Amen? Now, there's going to be some people in the church that's going to say some things. There's going to be people who do some things that's going to hurt you. Now, there's going to be some people who do some things that's going to uh, really offend you sometimes. And here's you know, what Paul don't let that discourage you. Now, I tell you what, if you've got an with your brother, take it to your brother. Amen? Now, if your brother don't listen, come get somebody else and take it with you. Now, that's, what, that's all about. Uh, but here's what Paul was telling them. Uh, he said, look, you didn't offend me. You're not going to drive me away from my God. He said, I'm going to Romans chapter number. That neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, 
nor height nor damp nor any other creature to ever separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, in other words, he said, you're not going to be able to separate me. Amen. You're not going to be able to separate me from God. You're not going to be able to separate me from what I believe in. Now, that's the stand. That's the, 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 the ground that we're going to take right now with every single solitary one of them. You can't probably realize that you cannot practice the law and grace at the same time. You can't do that. You need it's one or the other. Amen. That's what he was trying to tell the people. Verse 13 says, It is to know uh, how to prove the infirmity of the flesh. I preach the gospel unto you at first. I was talking about the infirmity of his flesh. He preached the gospel to them. There's all kinds of speculations. What Paul meant by here, or what, or what Paul might actually have. But Paul, when Paul went to preach to them, he had that most likely had some type of illness. But yet he pressed through. Yet they pressed through and allowed him to come. Now we got to mask up. Stay at home. Right? That's a whole other message for a whole other day. For a whole other prayer. Listen, Paul was saying that he preached to them through his infirmities and preached the gospel and them at first. And verse number 14 says, In my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despise not. And nor rejected, but received as an angel of God, even as Christ. In other words, they received him, they welcomed him, uh, in spite of whatever illness he might have, uh, uh, in spite of whatever was going on in his life, uh, whatever was happening there, uh, they received him and because they were hungry. Uh, they were willing to hear the word of God. Uh, while, while Paul was getting, uh, uh, getting on them about, writing the letter about, he was writing to them, telling them, saying, listen, uh, you heard the truth, you received the truth, you changed, uh, and now you want to go back to where you were. Why would we ever Real quick, she put it in the song, the first of the I asked you, have you left it all behind? Or did you bring it back into your life? It don't have to be drugs or alcohol or any of those kinds of things that we think about very often. Could be those things. Could be those things.
Thank <laughs> you. 